Hey folks, how's it going? Today we're gonna have a little special episode and actually I'm, I'm pretty excited about what we're gonna look at today, which is actually the Z2i camera. And I'm pretty excited about this because I feel like the Z cameras have always been on the peripheries. Whenever we've had conversations about connect cameras and depth sensors, you always hear somebody say, oh yes, but the Z is a good option as well. Like it's got such a great rich gradient in its depth or it's got all these extra features. But for some reason, it always seemed hard to get a hold of and try out. So thanks to my good friend and colleague, Aristotle Rufanis of Works of R, I got my hands on a nice little Z2i unit here that we're testing out in the office. And I thought it would be a really great way to compare some of the features of this compared to the Kinect, my initial reactions, and what I'm excited to start doing with this device and giving you a little sneak peek of some of the things that we're gonna be looking at. So you might hear me compare this a lot today to the you know, Connect 2 or even more recently, the more um, recent Connect Azure, which I've had the quote unquote pleasure <laughs> of using recently on a project. So it's not that the Connect is not a good device. I use that regularly. And I think there's a lot of places where you may want to even use the Connect over the Z, but I think there's a really interesting use cases for this Z camera. So let's dive in just real quick, first of all, on the hardware. Let me talk about the sanity involved with the design of this hardware. First of all, the bottom is flat. Can we talk about how the bottom is flat here? Sometimes when I look at the new Connect, I think to myself, why does it have this weird shape and weird form? And why do I need to put a plastic disc under it just to put it flat on my desk? What I really like about the Zed's profile is that it's very sleek, thin, uniform across the whole thing. And it really feels, it reminds me of the real sense devices where that it feels like it's gonna be easy to mount somewhere, easy to hide somewhere, easy to install. Sometimes with the Kinect devices, you feel like, oh, it's kind of got an odd shape or something sticking out. So we have to be very careful where we mount it. This feels like it's really easy to put just about anywhere. Another thing I am really enjoying about this, which is going to reveal uh, my inner boring professional is that the cable that they give you actually has screws on it. So you can secure this USB-C connection. I was so excited when I saw the screws on this USB-C connection. You don't know how many times I've had support calls that say, oh, something's wrong with the connect device or something's wrong with this and that sensor. And you know, the first thing I always tell them is just check the back, make sure the cable didn't get kicked out or anything like that. Aside from that, I think the rest of the specs of the hardware you can probably check out online, but those were just two of the highlights that immediately popped out to me. Very sleek case, looks like it's gonna be easy to install just about anywhere. Screw on cable on the back. Those are all good things in the professional world. So let's dive into some of the interesting bits of the software side of things, which I found interesting. First of all, I find the approach to using this device is very different from how we approach using the Kinect. Whenever I think about using the Kinect, my mindset goes towards almost a plug and play mentality. Let me throw this device into my project. Let me throw a Kinect top here and there. I know I don't really have enough settings. I know what it's going to do and it's going to do it reliably. Now, what it does do reliably for the Kinects are things like good camera angles, generally good uh, depth maps, good player index, good skeleton detection, all that kind of in a really easy plug and play package. What I think a lot of pros struggle with when working with Connect or even anyone kind of diving into Connect for the first time is you find there's a little bit of a lack of customizability in the settings. You kind of only have a few modes which that device works in and after that you either love it or it's not gonna work for you. What I really find interesting about the Z is it feels like their approach to developing this device has a lot of sane options that are available for you to decide how you want to use this device. And we're just going to look at a couple of them today, but I think even one of the easiest ones to look at is, for example, the quality of the depth map. So there are two sensing modes that come with the Z. One of them is called interpolate. And what it does is really nice because it knows that a lot of the time, the shadows that get casted from these kind of devices, and we'll talk a little bit more about how this device actually does its depth sensing and, and fancy features because it's very different than the Kinect. But a lot of time, there's gonna be shadows cast in the scene. We all know those big, hard black edges from using the Kinect. And one of the things that the Z folks have put into their SDK are a lot of algorithms that kind of just smooth those edges out. So it feels like you have this very rich, and as you can see here, this very rich gradient from me to my back wall here. But 
the nice thing is they give you the option to change back to what is just coming raw out of the camera. And you see when I switch that standard mode, now I have a lot tighter edges, but I also have a lot of noise. Now, this also brings up a really interesting thing that we've noticed just in our kind of first initial tests of it. The connect, the way that works is that it basically shoots this pattern of infrared all over the scene. And then the camera on it sees the pattern and sees the distortion in it, and it's able to reconstruct kind of the 3D environment from that information. The Z, on the other hand, almost acts a little bit more like people, where it has you know, a left eye and a right eye. And you can actually see here the perspective. We can actually shift between the left eye and the right eye inside of the camera and see from each one of its different cameras. But what it does behind the scenes, instead of using these IR patterns, it uses the left camera, right camera, a bunch of math to do the triangulation, and then it does the depth creation based on that information. Now what this means is that there are gonna be some situations where this is gonna hands down be way better than the Kinect. I'm already thinking about places like outdoor environments where we all know the infrared sensors like Kinects basically fail and stop working, whereas something like this would probably work perfectly fine. And to be honest, that's probably the optimal place to use this, which is in a brightly lit outdoor environment. But what we do notice is that sometimes because it's not using that infrared pattern for its depth tracking, it can actually be a little bit more sensitive to what it is seeing. So in my environment, which you can't really see here, but I could switch to my color image very quickly, is this very flat gray wall. And I'm kind of, you know, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, I'm in all black as normal, kind of standing in front of the dark gray wall. This is starting to trip the sensor out just enough, and maybe it's the, the coat of paint, you know, we're still kind of investigating what it is, but you can see the, the depth sensor is going a little bit wild behind me. So this is just some interesting things to think about. You know, no sensor is perfect, there's no magic bullet, but you're gonna get pros and cons with different devices. So this is one of those devices where, unlike the Connect, you know, the Connect you basically plug it in, you know indoors it's gonna work, it's always gonna be reliable. This one might have a little bit of testing that you're gonna wanna do on the job site, just to make sure there's nothing there that's optically going to trip out the sensor. Now with that said, going back to looking at these sensing modes, I really like that they give you these options to change between standard and interpolate, so that way you can kind of pick and choose. You know, what do I need for my project? Do I need a really rich gradient that, as you can see here, my fingers kind of get blended together? Or do you need something that's gonna be a little bit more precise and give you very exact kind of cutouts of things like hands? Now on top of that, there's also these depth quality modes that are really interesting. So by default, it's set on this mode called quality, which gives you a pretty good amount of filtering, probably what I would say the smoothest looking gradients inside of the depth map but you can also switch it to performance mode. So for example, if you're working on a project that's using a lot of the sensors, other features, which I'll talk about soon, you might wanna trade off a little bit of that smoothness and you can see it's got a little bit more noise, especially in these background areas. You might wanna trade that off so you can get some of the other more interesting features like the neural network based stuff that I'm gonna show you a little bit of preview of. And on the flip side, you also have this ultra mode, which in their documentation mentions that this is going to give you the most accurate kind of depth data throughout the range of the device. Now, you can see here, this is where it really shows. <laughs> we think the gray wall is really tripping the sensor out a little bit here. So, you know, I'll report back once we figure out what's going on here, but very interesting just to test it out to say the least. Hey there, sorry to pause the video, but I wanted to share something with you really quickly. Right now you can get 50% off the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only community and educational resource of its kind to comprehensively support touch designer developers and artists. We have over 120 hours of video trainings and courses, a private community where you can ask any question to myself and Matthew Reagan, and those get answered every day, as well as the first and only certification program for touch designer developers and artists. If this sounds interesting, click the link in the description below to learn more about the interactive and immersive HQ Pro and join for 50% off. Offer ends May 31st. Now going back to what I was saying about how I find the approach to this device is a little bit different from the developers, there are a lot of exposed parameters that I wish the Kinect had. For example, the ability just to set the minimum depth and maximum depth of the sensor. This is something that if you've seen our other videos, oftentimes I end up just using a quick GLSL shader just to create some clipping planes to say, hey, you know what? Everything past this distance, everything close to the camera, you know, around this distance, just discard all of that information. In this case, what I can do, and actually let me set this back to quality so it's not just flickering like insanity on my screen here. 
what I can do is actually define that minimum depth and maximum depth just with these parameters. So I can say, you know what, start from one meter and measure up to three meters. And you're gonna see once that happens, now all of a sudden I'm kind of more or less blended in with the background because I am pretty close, I'd probably say about 40 centimeters, maybe 50 centimeters away from the camera. Now this is really nice because a lot of the time we actually don't want to have you know, a huge amount of background information. And one of the cool things about the sensor is actually the amount of depth it can have in the documentation. They tell you you can get up to 20 meters of depth information coming out of it. Now in this case, when I'd set this to 0.3 minimum and 20 maximum depth, it's also doing a nice automatic rearranging of those values so I can at least visualize them a little bit. That's why all we're seeing is black now because everything is within a one meter range of the camera. So let me bring this back to about three meters and you can see it automatically rearranges the colors of that gradient for us just so it's nicer and easier to visualize. So I think that's a really nice feature built into it. Also this depth stabilization is really nice. I find this is one of those things I miss the most about the new Connect is that in the Connect 2, there were a lot of options for doing uh, filtering of the skeleton data and filtering of data in general. But with the Azure, it feels like you're basically on your own. You know, if you want to filter the data, you want to smooth it out, good luck, have fun. Now with this one, this button essentially does the operation of taking multiple frames of the depth data and then combining them together behind the scenes with their algorithms to try and give you the best and cleanest and least noisy response. And we can see even just looking at this kind of depth map that we see here, aside from the fact that the background, you know, is kind of still flickering a little bit crazy, you know, the trace around my arm, very smooth. It's not noisy like we see oftentimes with Kinect devices that there's this constant flickering of noise around silhouettes. So that's kind of a really exciting thing as well. Now, the final thing I'll just mention about the kind of texture information that we can get from it that's really interesting is that there's a great range of resolutions and FPS uh, settings that we can put forward. So we can put it down to a lower FPS, like right now it's at 1280 by 720, so I can get 60 FPS. I could move it up to 1920 by 1080, but then that's going to get limited to about 30 FPS. Uh, and I'll show you guys the manual very shortly because there's actually a very, very great manual. Probably my most, the, my, if my top three features were the screw on cable and the manual and the flat bottom, you know how uh, boring of a person sometimes I can be. But it's really nice that you just have these options and they're really easy to use. Just like a Kinect, it's got a lot of different textures here, the color mode as always, depth mode, but it also gives you a bit of interesting information between the confidence, disparity, and the normals, which are just kind of more informational layers that you could use in further processing. I find the normals one is, is definitely just trippy to look at, if nothing else. We'll get into more uses of a lot of these fancier uh, modes in other videos, but it's just nice to know that it also has things like point clouds. Now I'll come back to the spatial texture one because that one's a really interesting one. But for now, that's, that's kind of the main elements of the textures that are interesting for me. One of the cool parts about seeing the Z chop itself is that you can get a lot of information about the sensor's position in space and it feels pretty accurate. Uh, I feel this is something that's missing from the Kinect and it's one of the reasons why you never hear about people using the Kinect for camera tracking. Whereas I have heard quite a number of stories of folks using the Z as a really successful camera tracker in virtual production environments. And that's because, as you can see here, it has a pretty decent, you can see the RZ as I'm rotating it. I can see the RX as I'm rotating it. It's got a pretty decent amount of sensors inside of it that are giving me position in space as well as rotation. And you can even do things like detect planes inside of the environment, which is really cool. So that's gonna be some exciting stuff we're gonna play around with in future videos. And the last thing I wanna take a quick look at, which is probably I think the most exciting thing for me next to the screw on cables, which I'll probably be talking about till, till my grave is screw on cables, is the Z SOP. Because I think one of the most requested things I've seen from folks who grab the connect and get into point clouds for the first time is the first question they have is how do I 3D scan something <laughs> with this device? And the unfortunate answer is it's not that easy. It takes a little bit of kind of DIY to make it happen. With the Z, it's actually built right into their SDK to be able to do these kind of 3D scans. So if I was to do something very fun very quickly, I'm gonna to go to my Z top here. I'm gonna set it to the spatial texture mode. Now it's gonna give me a warning that says, hey, you know what? It's only available when you 
do a backflip and do some secret jutsu, but good for us, luckily we know what that jutsu is. So what I can do is go to this Z SOP here, and I'm gonna turn on the sample button, and I'm gonna turn on normals, texture, and consolidate points. Now what that's going to do is it's already starting to sample the points here, and if I home my viewer, you can see it's starting to collect the points that are gonna build this 3D mesh that it's going to build automatically for me. Now, the amazing part about this, which is the most exciting for me, is that it's smart enough to allow me to actually move my camera and basically scan you know, the environment all in real time. Now, I wouldn't say it's real time enough that you're gonna be scanning and outputting immediately. There is a little bit of a turnaround process. So for example, if I now put my camera down, I turn off my sample button, it's gonna tell me that it's extracting the mesh here and it's doing a little bit of work behind the scenes. But once it's done, essentially it's gonna give me a mesh. Now in this case, <laughs> it looks insane because I just kind of jiggled the camera around <laughs> like a madman and that's why you can kind of see me in the front here, the back wall, a little bit of ceilings up there. Um, but the really cool part about this is it gives you a lot of parameters around how the scan happens, what kind of resolution you have, what kind of range you have, how much filtering is applied to the mesh creation. And even better is it generates a full color UV map that you can apply as a texture back to that 3D geometry that got made to basically make a, a pseudo real-time 3D mesh colorized. So that's an exciting feature. We're definitely gonna have a totally separate video just diving into that once we get a little bit more into the intricacies of, of how to best make that work. The last thing I'll say that's really exciting about this device, and I think the Kinect is going to start adding some of these features soon, which is why they have so much of their kind of materials being open source and on GitHub, is that there's a lot of really cool features in terms of neural networks, AI, and what that can bring to our industry. And actually, before I dive into that, I have to a shout out to the Stereo Labs documentation. Probably one of the cleanest hardware documentations I've seen in a very long time. You can see everything is very well organized, all of the different categories, the different things you might want to do, the different integrations with examples. And you can see it's just really nicely laid out, telling you what kind of modes you have access to, what limitations in terms of frame rate, all really just easy to navigate and easy to use. So I'm really excited just to even read through the documentation because I know it's gonna be easy to go through. But just to give you a little preview, some of the things I'm excited about using are things like the 3D object detection. So this exists in a kind of middleware that Stereo Labs, the makers of the Z make. And I'm excited to see how we can get that up and running. I gotta get CUDA set up on my system, so that'll probably take a week or two to get that up and running. But then we're gonna see if we can get some of this data into Touch Designer. They also have a lot of this kind of object detection and segmentation like you've probably seen from machine learning. They've got things like the skeleton detection. I mean, what sensor in the modern era doesn't have skeleton detection anymore? So this is gonna be really exciting stuff to see if we can pull together inside a Touch Designer and how this might be able to work alongside something like a Kinect device or in which situations it might be better or worse to use that with. So with that said, I thought it would just be a fun video just to give you a quick heads up and tour and look at what the Z looks like. I know for a lot of folks, they're hard devices to come by in real life. So hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of over the shoulder view into it. See you in the next one. Hey folks, thanks for watching. As I mentioned earlier, you can get 50% off the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only community and educational resource of its kind to comprehensively support touch designer developers and artists. We have over 120 hours of video trainings and courses, a private community where you can ask any question to myself and Matthew Reagan, and those get answered every day, as well as the first and only certification program for touch designer developers and artists. If this sounds interesting, click the link in the description below to learn more about the interactive and immersive HQ Pro and join for 50% off. Offer ends May 31st.